Hi there, my name is Phil Yules. I work at the Babe Institute in Cambridge in the UK. This is a video tutorial. It's a walkthrough showing the installation of Labrador on a blank server. Um, I'll be installing Apache to run a web server. I'll be installing PHP, MySQL, and once I've done that, then I'm going to download and install and configure Labrador and quickly test it. Um, I'm starting with a blank server, which I've set up just now. It's a CentOS server. All I've done is I've disabled SE Linux um, and I've set up the networking and I've set up SendMail. Uh, apart from that, it's a completely blank server, which is just a very basic configuration. So, first things first, we need to install Apache so that the server can function as a web server. Uh, brought up Putty here, I'm logged in as root. Um, on this distribution, Apache is known as HTTPD, so I'm going to use yum to install this uh, Apache as a service. So I do yum install HTTPD. This is going to have a think, at work out the best mirror, and download and install Apache for me. Follow the wizard. Great, and that's worked. Great. Okay, Apache is now installed. Um, all services like Apache will be installed, um, disabled. So the next thing we need to do is start HTTPD. So service HTTPD start. Okay, that's worked. Now it's tempting at this point just to try and load something straight away. Uh, if I bring up Firefox and type in the address of the machine. Uh, but at this point, for us at least, it's not going to work straight away because the firewall is blocking the web traffic. So I need to configure the fi firewall. So if I go back to the terminal and I can use system config firewall.tui. It looks a bit weird in this system, but if I go to customize and scroll to the bottom and I can specifically allow www traffic, I'm also going to do secure and go forward and then I can let leave the rest of these on defaults. Close and OK. Great, OK. So the firewall is now configured. Now hopefully if I go back to this URL, it should now work. Type in the name of the machine and we get the default page for Apache. Great, so we now have a functioning web server. Uh, we don't quite have everything we need yet because Labrador is written in PHP and it uses MySQL, so we need to install these as well. Uh, we're going to install PHP first. Again, I'm going to use yum. I'm going to install PHP and PHP MySQL. Follow the wizards. Great, that's worked. First thing I need to do is restart Apache now that PHP is installed so that it will it'll know that it's there. So I'm going to do service HTTP restart. Okay, that's worked. You can do a quick check with um, PHP to make sure it's installed properly. If I go to the web root and var www.html, I'm going to create a test file. Um, it's just a very simple command, just it's an empty file with PHP tags and the PHP info function. So now if I go to uh, the back to Firefox and type in PHP info.php, I should get information about PHP. So this just shows that the PHP installs work properly and these are all the config variables. Great, so that's working properly. I'm going to get rid of that file. So PHP is done. Next thing is to install MySQL. So MySQL server. And the wizard. Great, that's worked. Uh, MySQL is a service like Apache, so I'm going to do service MySQL D start. Okay, great. Right, everything is now up and running. We've got Apache, we've got PHP, we've got MySQL. So the next thing to do is to install Labrador itself. Now, you can install a Labrador anywhere, we, we recommend installing it somewhere sensible and then configuring Apache so that when you type in URL, Apache knows where to look for it. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to do it in the SRV folder. Uh, it's because most of the config files come with that as a default, so they should work out of the box. So if I move to the SRV folder, and then if I download the file, uh, 
see that I've got a Labrador file. It comes as a tar.gz file, so I'm going to untar that file. That seemed to work properly. If I do ls, you can see that I've got the Labrador folder now. Um, we also need a folder for all the data to go in. So again, this can be wherever it makes sense. It's probably going to be a network drive or something like that. Uh, for now, I'm going to make a directory called data. Um, and I'm going to quickly change the permissions to 777, which is a bit sloppy, but it won't work for this tutorial. Obviously, you probably want better security for, for your install. Great. Now that we've got all the files unpacked, we need to configure Labrador so that it will work on our system. If I go into the Labrador conf directory, you can see there are a bunch of files here to help us do that. The first one I'm going to use is labradordatabase.sql, which will set up a new database called Labrador and a new user called Labrador. I'll overwrite anything you've got there already, so if you're already using Labrador, make sure you don't run this file. I'm just going to do mysql with user root and use this SQL file. Great, that's set up the database, so that the database is all ready to go. Next, I'm going to rename the example file, the Labrador config example, to just .php, which will give us the Labrador config file that we need. I'm now going to edit the config file just to put in the variables that we need. So I'm going to use nano, and I'm going to scroll down and set the URL and the data routes. So that's called put in ws6 and set up the data directory that we created just now, which is SRV data. I'm also going to go down here and put in my email address in the list of administrators so that when I register, I can um, it will already know that I'm an administrator and give me privileges straight away. Um, you can see the database settings above, which should work with the default install that we just did. When you do this, it's worth going through the whole file and reading all the comments and setting it up to work as you want it to. I'm going to save it and exit. Great, so the config file is set up. Um, now the final thing is to set up Apache so that it knows where to look for the Labrador install when you type in the URL. You want to edit the config file yourself um, so that it points to the correct directory. And once you've done that, you can move it to the um, Apache confd directory. So I'm going to move that file, and then I'm going to restart Apache. OK, that's everything. There's a folder within the Labrador conf directory called the Labrador Database SQL. That will install um, a, create a new database in your MySQL server called Labrador and it will create a new user called Labrador and then it will set up the basic table structure um, from blank. It will overwrite anything you've got so if you've already got an installation of Labrador don't run this command um, and it's just using user root. So if I run this that's installed everything so now all the Labrador database is set up and ready to go. Great, OK, uh, next I'm going to configure Labrador. So I'm going to go into the Labrador folder, go to conf, and you can see in here uh, that there are a few files, and there's one which is we need a labrador underscore config.php. There's one called labrador config.php dot example, which I'm simply going to rename to dot php so that it's in the right place. Um, now this is the default setting so we need to set up a couple of things so that the system will work with this. So I'm going to quickly go in and edit this file. I'm just going to use nano, you can use whatever you like to edit this file. Okay. Now things I need to edit here for the purpose of a demonstration are the URL so that it knows where to it knows where it's running from, which is WS6. Uh, and I need to change the data routes, which is where all the data is held, which we've just created that folder that's in SRV data. Um, next, I'm going to add myself as an administrator address so that when I register, Labrador knows to give me administrative um, privileges. Uh, you see all the MySQL settings above. It's got all the defaults in there, which should work with what we just created, but you can put in your own login details for the MySQL user and everything. 
it's worth going through this file, reading your comments and configuring it to work exactly as you want it to. I'm going to save this file. Great. Um, finally, you can see, uh, well, I said at the start that we need to configure Apache to, um, to point to the right directory for Labrador so that it knows where it is. Uh, again, there's a, an example, as a config file within this folder called labradorapache.conf which you'll want to edit so that it points to the right directory. It's already set up with SRV Labrador, so I'm just going to move that conf file into the HTTP the Apache conf D folder. Um, we need to now restart the server so that it, Apache knows where to look for it. So I'm going to do service HTTP restart. Moment of truth is type it into the Firefox and see what we get. So sold it to use a Labrador root and it's loaded. So it seems to be working. That's great. I'm quickly going to do a couple of tests now just to make sure that Labrador is working properly with the database and it can access the files and everything properly. So I'm going to register first off myself. Because I've set up uh, my email address in the config file, it should automatically give me admin privileges as soon as I register. Okay, and sure enough I've got an email over here. If I click this link then it will load up the page and my email address is verified. So now I can log in. And I'm logged in, everything seems to be working, so that's great. That probably means that the database is working properly. Now I'm going to try creating a new project uh, just to make sure it's talking to the NCBI servers and everything through the Ajax calls properly. Um, I'm going to drop in a, an accession number here and see if it can retrieve the information about it. Sure enough, we've got the information about the project, we've brought in information about paper, and everything looks looks like it's working well. Add myself as a contact and I'm going to save project. Uh, if you want more information about what it is I'm doing at the moment, we've got a couple of other walkthroughs which show basic usage of Labrador and also uh, administrative usage of Labrador. But for now I'm just going to quickly run through this. Now if I go into processing and I'm going to create a new processing script just to see if this works. This is RNA seq data so I use top hat. Um, these are all using the defaults that come um, with the config files in Labrador. Again, you can configure this to have different steps, different pipelines, different server setups, so it will work on whatever system you're using. Uh, select the genome, that's written the script for me, and it's, that's where it's going to save this file, a moment of truth. Great, worked first time, so it's created our file. I right, go back to Putty now, um, look in SRV, go into data, can see this folder that Labrador's just created and uh, you can see the bash script that it's just written for me which all looks as I expected to. Fantastic! So Labrador's installed, it's working, everything seems to be good. I hope that's helpful for you. Um, if you have any queries do get in touch. Good luck using Labrador. Thanks very much.